Uh, welcome to Spit Bucket. We're at a really special winery at the moment, Pig's Peak. We've been um, showing around. We've got exclusive access to some of the wines that are still in barrel. Um, I really hope you enjoy this episode. What we're going to try now is 2010 Zinfandel. This is off the Cargo Road vineyard out at Orange and previous vintages of this wine have been written up as the best ever made in Australia. But about five years ago we made a decision to stop entering wine shows, um, to stop sending samples to journalists. So as a result there have been no reviews on this wine for years now. Um, this one is currently already sold out pre-bottling mm -hmm. um, and in fact we won't have any Zinfandel available to the public until the middle of 2012 if all goes well. The thing about Zin is that they make really big fruit driven styles. The fruit for a red wine really leaps out of the glass which you don't often get with the red. Uh, mm, so what we're getting here is really really sweet fruits and um, culminating with really balanced acid and uh, not an overly overt tannin structure, but everything's totally in balance. Really, you can really tell it's a, sort of a cool climate style. It's no, there's no heat at all. The thing that fools you, and it fools everyone, the wine is 17.5% alcohol. Um, because the wines are cold soaked for about five days pre-ferment, we seem to be able to get away with making these, what on paper, are completely wrong wines, but on the nose and on the palate, mm. perfectly balanced. Yeah, perfectly. The vapours in here, it just like envelops the glass and when you smell it, it's just an absolute hit. It's an um, unbelievable wine. It's no wonder it's sold out. They, they get like, because we don't pick them until there's about 20% raisining of the fruit, yeah. you get a Christmas cake sort of character in the wine so, from these dried sultanas. This is like a, almost an Amarone style right. from Italy where they, um, they leave the grapes out to uh, sort of raisin up and then when they press it they get this really super concentrated uh, juice. I started off working for BHP when I was 17 as a chemical engineer and I did it for a few years and quit and ended up working as a chef for the next four years. So I ended up with this weird background of smell and taste and then science. So every now and then I'd make a pet project wine where we try to break some new boundaries. And one of the things working with food and wine matching is that chocolate doesn't really work with wine a lot of the time. And I was thinking about it and thought that if we use something like chocolate in cooking, we might use blackberries, raspberries, cherries, strawberries, coffee as ingredients. And all of those characters are red wine characters. So we made a dessert Shiraz to go with chocolate based desserts. So try the wine. It's off a, a very old Shiraz vineyard. And the wine is sweet. But um, if you think of high cocoa chocolate, it's not overtly sweet, and neither is the wine. I actually get tin pears. Yeah, you do. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of a canned fruit juice smell. I, I say that in the most highly way you can say it, but it, it, it's unbelievable. What you have is nothing too overt. It's not like springing out. It's, there's no heat at all, which is, which is quite strange for a sweeter wine. It's only 9.5% alcohol. Only 9.5%, so it's got a little bit of residual sugar. Yeah, it probably would have made a wine of 16%. So there's still 100 grams of sugar left behind, but there's a heap of tannin, which is actually balancing out the sugar too. Well, I'm going to try it with a bit of chocolate. Mm. So the chocolate dries out the mouth, you know, the chocolate. Oh, and the wine, because it's not so overtly fruity, it's quite savoury in the end. It doesn't conflict with the chocolate. It's, it's a match made in heaven. And there aren't too many, um, as we've already been told, wines that match chocolate, which is it's quite an achievement. It gives you almost like a black forest cake feel in your mouth. Exactly, and everyone's invited. <laughs> wow. So did you just uh, stop Malo or...? Uh, well, it didn't make it to Malo, it didn't make it through Did, primary. Didn't make it through primary. <laughs> so <laughs> what we do is we chill it mm -hmm. for about five days in tank on skins, ferment it very slow and very cold, yep. and when it gets down to about 100 grams of sugar, 
we press it almost immediately, we filter it and similarly bottle it. And how long did it take to ferment into to this? Uh, about 10 days. Okay, so that's a very, very... Bottled in about format. 20. Yeah. We just want to capture as much of the primary Shiraz flavours as we can mm -hmm. and just get it in the bottle and keep it like that so you get that colour, so you get that flavour. It's super primary and it's super fresh. It's, it's amazing for a wine of um, this, this type. It's actually super, super fresh. Let's go weirder. Let's go weirder. That's what we like at Spoobucket. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the great wines of the world are the Hungarian Tokais. And what they do is they mix sultanas effectively into the wine while they're making it. And then depending how many sultanas they put in, the wines are given higher quality levels or higher gradings. So you buy three, a basket of sultanas is patanya. You buy three, four, five, six, seven patanya. And that tells you how sweet it will be and how luscious. This year, our whole Riesling vineyard turned into sultanas. Uh, we had a series of terrible weather events. We ended up picking two and a half tonne of sultanas, which we then soaked in 1,600 litres of musket petit gran. And the sultanas actually sucked up the musket and then we squeezed them back out and squeezed all the flavours back out of the sultanas. This is what came out the other side. So what we get here is heaps of citrus peel, a bit of um, quince as well, but all oh, there's sort of smell a lot of ac like a lot of acid base to it. It's good fun. They've just thrown this on the list of Tetsu's. So oh, that's fantastic. And when you try it, the acid doesn't overpower it or anything. It's just totally in balance. Do you, do you have a uh, food pairing with this one? Uh, anything sweet like a dessert style, the classic Australian Botrytis styles. I think you can't go past strong soft cheeses or something like foie gras. Yeah. Um, well, this is a lot better than the classic Australian dessert it's style. So it's got because it's got something that's going to keep it going for a little the, while. The Riesling Vineyard's at almost a thousand metres, so it's super high altitude. As a result, the grapes are naturally acidic, but they actually turned to sultanas not at the end of their ripening. In this case, they turned into sultanas at the start of their ripening. Yeah, oh, really? They're only about eleven and a half bow, mate. So the acid that was in those grapes at that point was enormous. And because it raisined, it actually concentrated the acidity even further. Talk about turning a freak weather activity into a fantastic wine, which you, you're not going to be able to get every vintage, you know? It's, no, it's I'm treating this special. a one-off. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the level of devastation <laughs> that I saw in that vineyard. Well, look, that's the make of a great winemaker, someone who can take a terrible vintage and craft it into something that, you know, it's a really special Australian wine. Vidello comes from the Isle of Madeira, mm -hmm. off the coast of Portugal. Yes. And it does, it was involved in one making one of the great fortified wines of the world. Mm -hmm. In the Hunter Valley, since 1992, when people started using varietal names, Vidello is more thought of by Australians as a dry white wine. Yes. But historically, it was used for fortified production. Mm -hmm. So in 2003, I picked a batch of Vidello. Mm -hmm. I fortified it with a brandy made out of Riesling, which was rare. Normally, brandies are made out of quite neutral grapes. Yes. But I got this batch of Riesling brandy. It actually had floralness and aromatics. Mm -hmm. I blended it in with some Vidello, put it in barrel. And in July this year, so seven years later, I pulled it back out and bottled it. So over the years, about 50 litres of wine a year out of the 500 litre barrel evaporated yep. or got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we then make 50 litres each year and we top it up again. Solera. A one barrel Solero effectively. Yep. And uh, this is where it ended up. Oh, okay. Okay, Solera is where you keep on, um, you have one barrel of wine, right? Or one, one quantity of wine. and. Uh, when it evaporates or when you bottle some wine out of it, you keep on topping it up and it, you keep continuing the cycle and you get obviously a really complex mix of wine from back to the very first vintage and also an addition for the very recent vintage. And it really adds complexity and that's what some of the best sherries in the world are made from. You see some of those Spanish black sherries. Yes. And they might have Soleras over 150 years old. Exactly. So some of those original grapes are still in there and still going into the bottles. It's, it's like a sourdough history. actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a fantastic wine. I'll certainly be buying a bottle of this if, it, if it's for sale, of course. Yeah, well, but no one knew it was coming. <laughs> This is a special wine, I very much like this. It finishes, 
It finishes, um, it's a, a little bit of sweetness, but um, it's not overt, and there's a certain amount of dryness on the palate. It's, it's really, it's very well balanced. I mean, all the, all the wines we've had today, it's, the trademark of them is they're well balanced. Even if they're big, they're well balanced. If they're um, sort of finer wines, they're, they're still well balanced, and um, the tannins and the acid is always, you know, in harmony. If you type Pig's Peak in the internet, we're, we're the only ones that are going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you've heard it here first, type Pig's Peak into Google, you, you're going to find the best winery in Hunter Valley. We can recommend it without a doubt. Super boutique wines, handmade, handcrafted with loving care. You'll be, you'll be hard pressed to get the vintage because they do sell out, but if you can find one, we recommend it without a doubt. Well, it's been a pleasure to try here, taste here. Yeah, thanks for coming through.